All right, everyone, welcome to the Behind the Sold Sign podcast with myself, Justin Sonye, and my colleague, Sheila Kirkpatrick. We're so excited to have you guys here with us today, where we discuss all things real estate and just the success stories behind the sold sign. So let's get to it. We're going to initially talk about the November market stats and kind of gear into what we expect for 2024. The Bank of Canada has announced that they will be meeting January 24th of 2024 to discuss the interest rates. So we'll just kind of give our perspective on that and then get right into the rest of the podcast. That's right. <laughs> awesome. So we know in 20 um, November of 2023, we saw the highest sales record ever recorded for that month. I know, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. But we also noticed a few other things, which was a decrease of 3.1% in the overall inventory. So the inventory is getting smaller which is a consequence low. <laughs> of the purchase price or the average sales price increasing because there's not enough supply for the current demand. Absolutely. So that average sales price was in around 303. 303, 118, yeah. Yeah. So with that number, um, again, with the supply and the demand, the house prices are still so much higher than the, what they used to be. And uh, one of the things I find interesting is 20... 20 years ago, average sales price was about 80000 So is now, <laughs> just crazy, right? Wild. So when you think about that and you think about investing in real estate 20 years now in, in investments, more than three times tripling that amount for the average sales price in St. John. So little cray cray. <laughs> little cray cray. And just looking at the stats too, a 9.8% increase from last year. That's and again, who would have thought that with our inventory so low, it's hard to believe we've actually had an increase in sales. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> now, we can't really give a perspective on the December stats because they're not released yet. The board That's releases right. them in the middle of the month, so they'll come out around January 15th for December. However, like we said, January 24th, the Bank of Canada is meeting to discuss the interest rates. Yes. Do you have predictions based off of what you've been reading, hearing? How do you think this scenario is going to play out? And how will that impact people looking to buy or sell real estate in the coming year? Well, it's interesting because with the interest rates, we've seen some crazy things in the last few years. And we've, we've seen all-time lows. And then it almost made us feel like we were in all time highs because the, the Bank of Canada uh, prime rate had just cha you know changed from about 2.25 and now we're currently sitting at 7.2. So that seems like such a big change. But when you think about the history of interest rates and where they've been, I know there's been a couple of times over the years where I've bought houses and it was in around 5%. And right now I'm seeing five-year fixed rates 5.14. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, so we kind of get stuck when we feel like we have lost something. So there's just this change of interest rate, which, which is making us feel like we might be losing something, but maybe we're just getting back to where we were. And with that being said, I, I do think that the rates are going to hold. Um, I'm predicting they're going to hold strong at just where they are right now. And as the year continues to unfold for us, I believe we're going to start to see some decreases in those interest rates. So essentially, you're saying when they meet January 24th, it's going to be to kind of discuss what has been occurring with the interest rate in the market, but they're going to kind of leave it a little bit longer to see how it plays out until later in the year. Yeah, I think they're going to they're going to hold where they're at right now. Yeah. Okay, valid. And then I agree, I do foresee the interest rate coming down which will likely impact the buyer demand because that's what a lot of people are waiting for. Yes. Because the interest rates have them scared. That's right. And then when those interest rates drop, they're now competing with every other person that's on the sideline waiting for those interest rates to drop so they can all fight for the house, which in return is increasing that sales price. So Sounds, makes sense, eh? Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, so what would be the best thing to do? So if... We're right now, we're traditionally, we will see um, 
uh, a slowdown of the market in the end of November, December, yep, uh, going into into, holidays. into January. Then mm-hmm. you'll see new listings hit the market and that excitement begins to climb again. But if I was a buyer in the market right now, I would not be waiting until second or third quarter for those interest rates to drop before I made that purchase because the house price itself is going to increase. So if it were me, I'd be buying now. Totally agree. And then too, just to add to that topic just a little bit more, when you are in such a competitive market, you can be house hunting for months and months and months. And so people true. are literally giving their everything to fight for this house because you are in such a big bidding competition. That's right. So it's like, do you really want to go up against that because the rates have finally dropped? Or do you want to purchase an investment right now for a decent price? And then refinance that rate once it drops later on in the year. So you kind of have the best of both worlds. Absolutely. Yeah. When it comes to the interest rates, I mean, you don't even have to lock in right now. You can go into a short term open mortgage and then lock in when you when you like a, a better rate. So we don't need to make those decisions, but getting the house at the best price would be more important, I think, than getting a, a slightly better interest rate. Agreed. Totally. Yeah. So those are kind of our predictions for the 2024 market. We do foresee an adjustment with the interest rates, which will likely create a higher demand in our market, which is something to look out for and something to decide if that's what you want to compete in or if you want to kind of be an action taker now and get ahead of the curve. Absolutely. Because one of the things I've heard you talk about, Justin, (laughs) is that we as agents have even thought that the house pricing was going to change over the last few years, you know, and ever since COVID has happened and people are migrating to our province and to our city, uh, we are still waiting for that crash that everyone talks about. Everyone was so adamant was going to happen. And I mean, we we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know. We knew things were getting wild and breaking historic records. Yeah. But we still haven't crashed. That's right. We just hit another record in November. So if it were me, I'd get out, I'd get buying. And I do think that there's a lot of things that are going to unfold this year. And some people will be happy about it and others will not. Yeah. But that's life. Absolutely. And that's real estate. Absolutely. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. So now let's get into, because this was a big topic of discussion this previous week as well, the CNN article stating that St. John is one of the best places to visit in 2024. Yes. So what was your initial reaction when you read that? Because if you're judging by online... (laughs) A lot of people were definitely confused or thrown off. It, yeah, I, I'm going to say that's what I find interesting. The interesting part is, is, you know, do you find life with gratitude or do you find life with what am I missing out on or what don't I have? So when I saw this article, I actually went to the comments first of the people around me rather than the article itself. And to see the negativity of what people had to say from our area is probably the most interesting part of the article. Agreed. I, sometimes we just find things to complain about that don't matter. We're going to complain about where the picture was taken. We're going to co- co- <laughs> like it was just kind of crazy. But right. what? Um, but what I did love about it is um, that we've had an opportunity for um, for other people, whether you're from our area, whether you're from other parts of Canada or across the world that are shining a little light on this greatest little city in the East. A big thanks uh, needs to go out to, his name is Neil Hodge, and he would be head of the travel um, tourism group in New Brunswick. And every... Every province has someone that's responsible for kind of advocating for the tourism in their province. And this guy has done a remarkable job. I read that he's he has um, completed almost 4,000 articles to kind of sell our city, like our wild. province. Um, and it just happened to be that this one was the one that had gotten picked up. And um, so a big thanks to Neil. So yeah, (laughs) big thanks to Neil. No, and it's so true because first of all, it's so impactful to see somebody shedding such a light on our community that I feel like, yes, we've received a lot more 
publicity, I would say since COVID with a lot of people, you know, we didn't have such a bad outbreak that everybody else has. So that put a lot of light on us and made a lot of people start to, you know, put our location on the map and start to relocate here. And now with this article again, it's like, okay, our city is finally getting some like good attention. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I mean, with local tourist attractions, like the Reversing Falls, Hopewell Rocks, which like we were saying, people were upset by that photo because it's not in St. John, but it is near St. John. Right. Of course, you've got to drive maybe an hour to get there, but still, that's relatively close. Yeah, absolutely. And being on the Bay of Fundy, whether it's the Irving uh, Irving Nature Park, Rockwood Park, like... I truly believe we have beautiful, like, scenery here. Absolutely. Like, a lot to really appreciate. We are in the middle of everything. We're an hour and 15 minutes from the U.S. border. We have the Quebec border, the Nova Scotia border, the PEI border. We are in the hub of things. And I think sometimes people forget the convenience that we actually have. So Very true. So those, the people that come here, they're going to have such an opportunity to, to travel to so many other places. Or if you happen to move here and buy a house through Justin or I, yes. you um, absolutely are going to get to experience those things if you're not from here. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of going back, because I know that we had discussed before, I went to Vancouver. It was my first time out west. But yes, there were bigger structures. It's a bigger city, bigger population, of course. But Mm -hmm. I was so taken back by the similarities. Like, I couldn't believe how much it reminded me of the East Coast. From the weather to the, you know, the Bay of Fundy that we have here, the mountains, like... It was really breathtaking, but it also made me very appreciative and humble of where I come from. Yeah. And I think sometimes too, because we're on the East Coast, people don't travel to us as much. But when you think about BC and you're thinking about Stanley Park and you're, you know, you're staying on one of the hotels on the coast of the water and you're, you just kind of feel like you're in St. John to some degree. Like you said, bigger structures. Um, There's, you know, some some nice things to see, but there are some similarities. Totally. Yeah. A little more amplified, but the core root of it, we've got it here. Yeah. We're, we're we're lucky. Absolutely. So no, definitely a great place to visit. If you've never been, you should. (laughs) And what would you say are your favorite, whether local shops to support or favorite Mm -hmm. things to do in our community? Like what, what do you love about our city? Okay. So I love the accessibility. We mm-hmm. just, I just kind of talked about accessibility. But what I mean is more local to the St. John and surrounding area. I love the fact that I can drive from the east side to the west side yes. in five minutes. I absolutely love that. I love that because I can get home quicker to my family. I love that I can get from different appointments. I know that we're not going to get in these huge traffic jams. Uh, I love the size of our city. So again, I say you can get from one side of it to the other in four minutes, but it also means that when I get to the grocery store or I go to the gym or I go to a a Sea Dogs game, I know I'm going to run into people I know. (laughs) And I love the fact that I can just go anywhere and run into people. And I just think that there is this uniqueness to um, bring people together here. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a sense of community overall. And whether it's on a sports field, whether it's going to the grocery store, I just feel like it's a bigger city compared to a town, but it's small enough to embrace each other totally and i would say you nailed it with that it is a huge sense of community it's small enough that you do recognize a lot of people wherever you go which is nice but then it's also not as small as a town where there's more opportunities here as well so absolutely it it does have that good middle ground which i love about our city Mm -hmm. and then again being on the Bay of Fundy and on the coast, like those are luxuries that we have. Our river system is a huge river system in Canada, like one of the best in the world. So we have a lot to be grateful for that I feel people overlook. Yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting because those who use what we have appreciate it. Those that do not use our resources, I think forget they exist. So if you're... Again, we this 
thing where we have four seasons and we have opportunities for recreation and we, you know, I wish we had some better recreation facilities in some areas, but we have recreation facilities that others will never have the opportunity because we have our frozen lakes and we have our four seasons and we can go snowmobiling and we can go golfing and we, there's just so much opportunity. We can go hiking in, in the woods and the, we talk about the nature park, but just to be able to fun day trail and there's just so much around. So I just, yeah. No, it is so true. So true. It's um, a cool it, spot. It is. Yeah. And like you said, central, <laughs> the seasons, the activities, endless possibilities. So if you are utilizing that, you're appreciating it. Yeah. So what would you say for anybody watching this video, whether looking to relocate or maybe they're in the city and they're like, maybe I'm on the outskirts, maybe I'm on the east side, wherever, and they want to relocate. And maybe they're a little nervous about interviewing and finding the right agent to advocate for them. What okay. would your advice be for somebody looking to make the move, but in the very beginning stages and need to find an agent to help them? Okay. I, I think that comes down to trust. I, I think that's a trust. It, it's about building trust. It's about building a relationship. It's no different than almost any other aspect of our lives where we're, you know, we're trying to build relationships with people and it's, it's, we create a trust. So I think it's important to have, you know, goodwill. Am I going to do what I say I'm going to do when I'm going to do it? Am I going to be on time? Am I going to show up for you? Am I going to get the answers to the questions that you need? So you can be interviewing your agent long before you actually are in a committed relationship. And that's by asking questions. And are they asking you questions? So what is it that you need out of the relationship? And are they trying to move you forward? Yeah. And I feel like those are huge nuggets because first of all, not a lot of people are interviewing multiple agents. Yes, there are some, we do see it, but not enough. A lot of people just think the first agent that they interview is the one they should just trust and go with. And sometimes that's not the case. So it is important to get a few people into your home, have a conversation. Who Who is driving the conversation? Is it you as the client or is it the expert that's kind of interviewing you, figuring out where you are in the process, what your goals are, like where do you see yourself? So that way I can take all of that valuable information. So important. And create the custom journey and show you the options within that that we feel would best suit you. But at the end of the day, we're not making the decision for you. We're providing you with all of that information so you can make that informed decision. Absolutely. But if you're if you're just not working with somebody who is asking you the questions to better navigate your situation, that would be an issue. Yeah. So I agree. It's yeah. building that connection. It's having somebody, you know, dig and figure out what it is that you are looking yeah. for. What are your goals? Are How they do... competent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they going to get the job done for you? Do they have systems in place or are they all just talk and then they're not going to fulfill their word, which is a yeah. huge issue Can that be. you wouldn't want to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, so definitely somebody that's, you know, a little more open to the conversation, asking the probing questions, getting the details before providing the solution, but yeah. then also showing the options to get to that solution yeah. and Moving letting you them. forward. Yeah. All right. So second, um, we'll call it pain point yeah. <laughs> or yep. possible pain point. And it's what about if the thought of moving is overwhelming? Yes. And it is a big decision. We all understand that. You're talking about the biggest asset that you'll likely ever own. So it's a very important process. But I think like we kind of talked about with having the conversation, it's having that conversation, getting that plan in place with your options and getting a little timeline together so you can wrap your head around it and decide if this is what you want. If you're nervous about moving because maybe you currently own a property that's too small for your family and you need to move into something that better suits your current lifestyle, yeah. that's fine. And we have options for that depending which one is best for you and your situation. But if we're not having that conversation and breaking down those options and what that journey looks like, I think that's where the overwhelmedness comes in. Yeah, I think 
I think what creates the overwhelming feeling is the unknown Mm -hmm. and the importance of us as real estate professionals is to take something that feels stressful and just show them a solution. I think that's really what it comes down to. So when you take something that feels really, really big and you break it down to something small and you give solutions, it's no longer overwhelming. Totally. And then I feel too exactly that by walking them and showing them what this process actually looks like and what we're going to handle. Which is exciting for us because this Absolutely. is what we do. This is, oh, it's it's our comfort zone. <laughs> Look at you, zone. even this, talking about it, you're excited. I'm like, <laughs> this is what we do every single day though. You're right. But then when you also have an agent that provides that full service product, there is so much less stress because you know everything is going to get taken care of. You know what our systems and how we conduct our business looks like at the point of the interview. Home evaluation process. Yeah. So it's like if you can show people where they are, where they want to go and how you're going to navigate that process and what your service provides as that solution, you immediately feel people start to relax and get a little more comfortable because like you just said, we're taking away the fear of the unknown and we're actually showing them how we're getting from point A to point B. And isn't it so interesting as a real estate agent and knowing that you're taking that ease away when you can feel the tension in the beginning and then by the end it's like the the, the tension has turned into excitement absolutely it's so so fun for us <laughs> and i feel like that is why we do what we do because we like to help people and we've we've done this numerous times this is our job so not only have we done it and done it well and learned different things we've documented them we put them into systems so that when we are now dealing with clients we have some things are repetitive throughout the transaction yes. and those things that are are documented in a systematic process where things are not falling through the cracks of course there are things that are different about every, every transaction, transaction <laughs> but it makes it a lot more smooth and makes it such a better experience for the client yeah. when those little miscellaneous things that are always the same are not falling through the cracks, like right. changing your mailing address. <laughs> but seriously, yeah. how many people have bought or sold with an agent and haven't been reminded of that? Right. And then they're like, oh, okay, we just closed and I have not changed my mailing address. Yeah. <laughs> documented systems right so yeah i think that is a huge factor taking out the fear of the unknown having that conversation and it's not about us it's about the client it's about really putting ourselves in their shoes and just making sure we're doing the absolute best for them absolutely just to kind of summarize that up it's we're going to take the fear out of what's going on. There's no, you're, you're, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. That's normal. That's, Absolutely. that's regular human behavior. And some people have more experience in buying and selling than others. There's, there's lots of people that don't have any experience whatsoever. Th- again, that's something interesting and fun for us is to be able to teach people the process throughout the way, ease the mind and be the problem solver. That's our job. Our job is to be the problem solver. Yeah, yeah. totally. That's where we bring our value. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. So let's discuss one more pain point. So we already talked about, you know, the highest sales record for November, Mm -hmm. the interest rate. So I feel like there is a lot of natural intimidation around the market. Absolutely. So what would your advice be for anybody either watching this episode or out there that is interested because maybe their, their situation right now is not ideal for them, but they are so scared about making the wrong decision in this kind of market, whether over purchasing for something or, you know, getting that high interest rate that they're just so nervous about because maybe they don't have a proper understanding of their options. Okay. So yeah, what, how would how would you navigate that? Okay. So I think what's really probably the most important thing to understand is that over time, real estate is a wonderful, wonderful investment. It is something that if you look at over the years, you are going to make money by holding on to your investment as long as you take care of your investment. So, and I think I touched earlier on when 
you know, 20 years ago, the average sales price was $80,000. And now we're looking at 300,000. And had I known then what I know now, I would have purchased, I would have purchased, I would have purchased more. You know, we've just gone through the, the COVID purchases, I'll call them, where it was, okay, well, I got to buy, I got to buy. Now I don't want to buy. Oh, I got to buy because the pricing keeps going up. And that is what we are seeing. So I think that because we've been in such an affordable economy, um, our house prices are going up. And at some point, they will teeter off mm -hmm. and they may even go down. But history will show you even those that have gone down, because look at our crash. We had our crash in 2008, 2009, we'll say. And um, we had a huge crash where numbers went down. All those people would be making money if they sold their house today. So as long as you're not going in to sell your house right after you've purchased it, you're always going to be okay in real estate over time. Absolutely. So it's, I'd say real estate from a longevity perspective is going to always be something you're going to be okay with. So whether you've had a bit of a higher interest rate, you're not locked into that interest rate forever. You're locked into it for a period of time if you chose to do that, or you could go in an open mortgage. And yes, it would be great if you could purchase at a lower purchase price, but our pricing keeps going up. So just jump into the market. Make sure you're educated. Make sure you, that you're being informed. Make sure you have a good agent that you trust. But I don't think for the long term, you'll ever have regret if you purchase real estate. And that's just it. I feel like a lot of people are not thinking the history of the market. You know, they're in this moment, they're blindsided by this moment because we talked about it earlier with the 2008, 2009 people purchasing back then, you know, everybody saying you're going to regret it. Yeah. Look at them now. People purchasing in the beginning of COVID when things were spiking again, going yeah. crazy. No, you're going to regret it. You're going to look at yeah. them now. So <laughs> it is really a thing. If you maintain your investment and you hold that pride of ownership and you don't just defer the maintenance, you will always reap that benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. If you are seriously considering getting into the market in 2024 or even in 2025, you need to make sure that you are associating yourself with an agent who is there to help guide you every yeah. step of the way and have these conversations with you like we're having with each other right now. Because yeah. at the end of the day, this is the real deal. <laughs> this is this is the history and the yeah. proof in the pudding of what we have seen throughout the history of, of real estate. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things I'm hearing today, and it's not that we've meant to talk about it in general, but... All I'm hearing over and over again is relationships, relationships, relationships. So I think if you have a good relationship, you will always be informed well. You will always be steered in the right direction. Having a good relationship with someone who is has integrity, has goodwill, has competency, and call us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and call us. Exactly. No, I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for our first ever episode. I know. Of so Behind exciting. the Sold Sign. <laughs> yeah. Where every sold sign has a story. That's right. Um, we really appreciate it. We hope you found some value and insight within our conversations, getting to know a little bit more about our market, discussing yeah. our city and everything it really does have to offer yeah like what is our spring summer going to look like with tourism because that's another thing that has really progressed here over the years yeah our tourism. i was reading somewhere else um in a separate article but last year's tourism was kind of at its highest that it had been as well so to kind of see this climbing 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 and the excitement and the buzz we just we have a lot to be grateful for. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions about anything, any scenarios or situations that you would love for us to address and kind of provide some insight to like we just did with those other ones, we would absolutely love to do that. So please leave us a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Like, share. Uh, subscribe. Yes. And make yes, sure. Yes, subscribe. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that before. Sheila's like, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> 
So make sure you tune in next Monday for another episode of Behind the Sold Sign podcast. We will be posting weekly. So every Monday, join us here, tune into the conversation, and hopefully you pick up some valuable information. And have fun with us. And have fun with us. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you know, we are people and we do have personalities and that's what we're looking to connect with, yeah. like-minded individuals. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks. I'm Justin Sonier. And I'm Sheila Kirkpatrick. Thanks for joining.